Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and turn on bell notifications so that way you can be notified when we go live and put out new content because I like to look in depth into whatever's going on in our government and I also, even though I stream the impeachment trials, I do try to find out what else is going on too and this is some other stuff that's been going on. So, alright. Alright, so if you watched that stream that we did recently on, it was titled No War with Iran Act and Student Loans. They were doing a few things together in that hearing that just did not make any sense at all. And uh, I heard a little clip that we're gonna, we're gonna play and you're gonna have to listen really, really closely, you guys, because it's so quiet. That's another thing that they like to do is that they like to have their microphone super, super, super quiet so you can't hear what they're saying. Okay, so this was an amendment to H.R. 550, the No War Against Iran Act. Okay, so in this, in this hearing, they were discussing uh, repealing the prior authorization of war so that Trump and future presidents can't use that as justification for taking out any military action over there right now because that's apparently what he was claiming when he uh, did the strong drone strike against Soleimani. So they repealed the 2002 authorization by Congress. They passed something that says uh, he has to get authorization and um, this this lays some of that out. Okay, so this is an am amendment to that. The acquisition by the government of Iran of a nuclear weapon would pose a grave threat to international peace and stability in the national security of the United States, United States allies, including Israel. I don't know why they couldn't, I mean, they said allies. They've said over and over again that Israel is one of our allies. So why are they, why are they just naming, like, Israel? What's, what's the point? And that's the only time that they name Israel in this paper, but it goes on to say um, the president has to authorize use of military force unless Congress has declared war. Exception, the prohibition under paragraph one shall not apply to use of military force that is consistent with the, uh, the, the war powers resolution. I always get that wrong, so I had to scroll back up to it. But they're saying that this is not preventing the president from using necessary and appropriate force to defend the United States and allies if Congress authorizes the use to relieve the executive branch of restrictions on the use of force reporting and consultation requirements or to authorize the use of military force. So, and they said earlier in here that he can't use the funds for that unless they say it's okay, right? And... So during that hearing, when they were talking about this, right at the end, now of course, nobody's gonna watch, nobody other than me is gonna watch two hours of a hearing where they're talking about random stuff and it's a house rules committee and they didn't even have it on like an easy to find YouTube channel, okay? And it's super quiet, so again, you're gonna have to listen very carefully, but in this, one of the representatives suggests that they extend the, the list of exceptions of which the president would be able to use military force and use federal funds for that military force without any kind of authorization from Congress, okay? So let me make sure that this is turned up all the way because it's super quiet. Mrs. Lesko, aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Mr. Chairman, no. Clerk, report the total. Four yeas, eight nays. Members not agreed to further amendments. Mr. Cole. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, H.R. 550, my amendment uh, uh, would simply expand the list of exceptions for the use of force to include defense against an imminent attack against the United States or against a catastrophic attack against the state of Israel. Thank you. Heard the gentleman's amendment. Uh, any discussion? Any uh, hearing none, the vote is on the Cole Amendment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Need a chair, the noes have it. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Hastings. Mrs. Torres. Mrs. Torres, no. Mr. Perlmutter. Mr. Perlmutter, no. Mr. Raskin. Mr. Raskin, no. Ms. Scanlon. Ms. Scanlon, no. Mr. Morelli. Mr. Morelli, no. Ms. Shalala. Ms. Shalala, no. Mr. Desonier. Mr. Desonier, no. Mr. Cole. Aye. Mr. Cole, aye. Mr. Woodall. Aye. Mr. Woodall, aye. Mr. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Burgess, aye. Mrs. Lesko. 
Mrs. Lesko, aye. Mr. Chairman? No. Mr. Chairman, no. Clerk, report the total. Four yeas, eight nays. Members not agreed to. Further amendments? Mr. Woodall. Okay, so he was like, we need to extend the list. Now, there were only uh, 12 uh, representatives, congressmen, whatever they're called. There were only 12 of them in there. So they kept, uh, it was the same eight versus four voting against each other each time. So this was not approved. So, oh, that graphic is really bothering me since it's like looking double on the screen. I'm sorry about that. So it was not approved, but right after this, like the next day, I think it was the next day. I think this was yesterday. I think that was the day before yesterday. What day was this? The 27th. So yes, the day before yesterday. So right after that, Trump delivers joint remarks with the prime minister of the state of Israel. And again, as I said earlier, if you want to be able to show these things and talk about it, use the government stuff. You know why you can use that? I'm gonna make a whole nother video about it showing you the copyright of, of the government. But if you're a taxpayer, you pay for this to be made, don't ya? So you can use it, okay? So let's, I'm gonna adjust the volume on this a little bit. We're not gonna play the whole thing and I'm gonna speed it up. But I just want you to hear a little bit of what Trump is saying. State of Israel looking for peace and that peace transcends politics by any measure, <laughs> unmeasurable, that's what they want. On my first trip overseas as president, I visited the Holy Land of Israel. I was deeply moved and amazed by what this small country had achieved in the face of overwhelming odds and never-ending threats. The State of Israel comprises only a minuscule amount of land in the Middle East and yet it has become a thriving center of democracy, innovation, culture, and commerce. Israel is a light unto the world. The hearts and history of our people are woven together. The land of Israel is an ancient home, a sacred place of worship, and a solemn promise to the Jewish people that we will never again repeat history's darkest hour. During my trip to Israel, I also met with Palestinian President Abbas in Bethlehem. I was saddened by the fate of the Palestinian people. They deserve a far better life. They deserve the chance to achieve their extraordinary potential. Palestinians have been trapped in a cycle of terrorism, poverty, and violence, exploited by those seeking to use them as pawns to advance terrorism and extremism. I returned from my visit determined to find a constructive path and it's got to be a very powerful path forward. Watch Netanyahu's body language. Conflict. To further this effort, I also met with President Abbas at the White House. Forging peace between Israelis and Palestinians may be the most difficult challenge of all. All prior administrations from President Lyndon Johnson have tried and bitterly failed. But I was not elected to do small things or shy away from big problems. It's been a long and very arduous process to arrive at this moment. On Sunday, I delivered to Prime Minister Netanyahu my vision for peace, prosperity, and a brighter future for Israelis and Palestinians. This vision for peace is fundamentally different from past proposals. In the past, even the most well-intentioned plans were light on factual details and heavy on conceptual frameworks. By contrast, our plan is 80 pages and is the most detailed proposal ever put forward by far. As I have seen throughout my long career as a dealmaker, complex problems require nuanced, fact-based remedies. That is why our proposal provides precise technical solutions to make Israelis, Palestinians, and the region safer and much more prosperous. My vision presents a win-win opportunity for both sides a realistic two-state solution that resolves the risk of Palestinian statehood 
to Israel's security. Today, Israel has taken a giant step toward peace. Yesterday, Prime Minister Netanyahu informed me that he is willing to endorse the vision as the basis for direct negotiations. And I will say the general also endorsed, and very strongly, with the Palestinians, a historic breakthrough. And likewise, we have really uh, a situation having to do with a race that is taking place right now. It will end, and we have the support and it's very important to say this, of both parties and almost all people in Israel. They want peace, and they want peace badly. <laughs> this is the first time Israel has authorized the release of a conceptual map illustrating the territorial compromises it's willing to make for the cause of peace, and they've gone a long way. This is an unprecedented and highly significant development. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for having the courage to take this bold step forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay, I'm not going to make you put up with any more of it and listening to the clapping on and on and on and on. Trump looked like he wanted to have Netanyahu take the podium so badly, and Netanyahu was just like, nah, man, nah, you're, you're good. I'm just going to stand over here. So, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised that most people in Israel would probably support whatever little tree thing you guys come up with. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not sure, you know, Palestinians feel exactly the same. And what else is interesting is Trump went on to say that Palestine should take this deal because they might never get another deal like this in the future. You know, this is the best one they've ever had. Well, if they're not happy with it either, then like, shouldn't more compromise be made in the future? Trump also goes on to say that he has recognized the Golan Heights and he apparently he wants recognition for recognizing the Golan Heights. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what kind of recognition he's looking for on that. So, that's been going on. Uh, after this, apparently, there's uh, been a report issued that the White House advisors and stuff were urging Netanyahu to not go back on this this document they're they're trying to get everybody to sign and everything so you know i mean i'm i find it very interesting that our government is always taking the side of israel let me know what you guys think i know there's a lot of other truthers and stuff that cover this kind of stuff so um you know and a lot of other bigger channels so if you guys know any of the bigger channels that are covering this if you want to give them heads up about that white page document and stuff go right ahead as i said it's linked in the description box below so that way you guys can see but thank you guys so much for watching and everything with me and listening to my rants i appreciate it <laughs> make sure that you follow us on twitter and instagram at grow the info and you can check out the website growtheinfo.com for other press releases and other good information as well